Well, it's it's great to to be the last presenter because uh, what I'm going to to discuss now is is well connected with the previous presentation. I'm I'm going to explain a little bit about what we call the epistemonicos equity filter, or the love equity filter is deployed in the living overview of evidence platform. Um, today, I'm going to cover. Sorry. I'm going to cover um, uh, what, what is the love platform where this uh, filter is deployed and what are the next steps. Uh, then I'm going to, to explain a, bit, a little bit more about the filter itself and the methods uh, behind the filter and how it's developed and, and the different components. And at the end, I'm going to show you the practical implications of how it's um, used by in the platform or from the user perspective. So uh, just a brief introduction, the living overview of evidence uh, platform uh, or system is a combination of different things. Uh, now we conceptualize the love, the living overview of evidence like uh, in, in our repository. So the first component is our repository. The second component is a classification platform that is the main component related with the talk today. And then this system is connected with different projects and external software through APIs or other means. So the, the proof of concept of, the repo, of our repository is what we have built for COVID-19. We created the COVID-19 love uh, repository that now contains over um, uh, 550,000 records. It's one of the largest COVID-19 repositories. And um, it's, it's available on the web. If you go to iloveevidence.com, um, you can enter all, all the features of this repository and to navigate and see all the things that I'm going to show today, um, except for some things that are not yet released, as I'm going to show at the end. And basically what we have done here is to uh, create software that goes to different sources, including uh, databases, trial registr registers, preprint servers, and other, and other means. Um, and we put everything into a single space, into a single database. Is that what we call a repository? Um, the system is systematic, so, so you can, see at any stage um, how many records we have retrieved, if the records have been excluded by a machine or by a, a human uh, screener, and how all the records have gone through different stages to enter into the repository or in the different categories of, of the platform. But um, it's important to say that this is the first component of this system. Um, it can be built for other topics uh, very easily. Of course, there are, there are resources implied. So, so we have not built repositories to all the topics, but, but uh, we think we can re re um, reproduce the, the, the process very easily in other topics. Now we are exploring uh, in different projects, but the system also allows to upload a file with reference. For instance, if you run the searches into all the databases, you can upload the batch of, the, of reference into the system and all the classification platform, the second component is going to work. And you can also connect this with other databases. So we are envisioning this as a system that can in, um, uh, interoperate with other databases and classify or enrich the documents from other databases with this system. And now the classification platform that is the main, the main um, component related with the talk today. It, our classification platform is based on uh, our own taxonomy. So we have been developing our taxonomy uh, during the last years, and now we have more than 5,000 terms. For each term, we have developed one or more 
Boolean strategy. So each term has a Boolean strategy attached. And we have also developed one or more algorithm uh, using different technologies, artificial intelligence and other technologies, uh, different type of classifiers uh, for each term. So each term of the taxonomy has an algorithm or more than one algorithm um, attached. And this is connected with a screening tool that allows, uh, and this is probably one of the most important uh, components of the, of the classification platform, allows for data reuse. So if someone else has a screen, the same document or the same records, you can reuse the information provided by that user. So what, what the system is doing is taking terms of our taxonomy and combining them um, uh, in, 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 in the proper way. So for instance, if you're interested in um, um, an evidence synthesis that has a population and intervention component in the strategy, the system automatically combines the Boolean strategies of the two terms, the population term and the intervention term, and uh, it, it, the system do the same with the algorithm. So combines all the classifications of all the terms and retrieve the combination of both or the and uh, the, 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 the intersection of the two terms uh, like using the Boolean operator and. So for instance, if you have COVID-19 and masking, you have a, um, a list of terms for COVID-19, a list of terms for masking, and the system combines both very easily. And we are doing the same with the equity filter. So the equity filter basically is adding an extra term to this system. So you are, you can um, overimpose a list of terms related with the equity filter uh, to the other terms. So the system is going to retrieve uh, the intersection of these three terms um, out of the three Boolean strategies, and it can do the same it, to, to use all the technology and the reuse of data based on the combination of the three terms. To give you an idea, each of these terms is a combination of multiple mm, more specific terms. So equity is a, a term composed or for, uh, of many other components like the Progress Plus, and as I'm going to show you before, each, each of the component of the Progress Plus is at the same time composed of many other terms. COVID-19 is also composed of different terms of subterms, and the same with um, personal protective equipment uh, that include face masks and other type of masks, and there are many types of masks and so on. So the, each of these terms has many subterms that are ordered in our taxonomy. And this is to give you just an idea of what the real strategy looks like. This is only a tenth of the real strategy. Uh, and the system is automatically combining everything. Of course, this is very difficult to read by human. We have um, a version that allows the humans to read line by line, uh, for instance, to report in, in, in an article or in, in, in other, in other uh, um, in a web page or in another system. Uh, but this is to give you an idea. So this system allows to recombine um, search strategies that would be very difficult to do uh, in, a, in the traditional way. And all the um, information goes to a screening platform that very easily allows you to reuse information um, provided by other screeners, human screeners and also to reuse the algorithms that have been already deployed. So you can easily, um, it, this can be done uh, separately by each term, but in this case, I'm showing that you can, for instance, decide to reuse everything, um, or you can decide to reuse each of the components. All the, the components have their own strategies with the, the, a different sensitivity, and the same with the algorithms that we also know what are the sensitivities and other measures of performance of each of uh, the algorithms. Um, there are different technologies behind this. Um, we have developed some uh, cutting edge classifiers, like for instance, the one that 
decide which type of article is uh, a record. Uh, and uh, by type of article, I mean a primary study, a systematic review, or other type of evidence synthesis. Or if, if the, the articles are randomized trial or others, in this case, we have developed a classifier that is based on deep neural network of a specific type called ExcelNet. Um, but for other types, we have um, uh, deployed algorithms based on more um, traditional or, or less sophisticated machine learning algorithms, uh, like the ones that you can find in many other uh, systems now. Um, and um, we have also um, deployed more than one classifier per term. So, so each, each algorithm is, asked, uh, is uh, acting like a, a screener, like uh, when a, in a review you have two screeners doing the, 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 the work in duplicate and you have discrepancies. We can do the same with the classifiers here and we have humans resolving the discrepancies between the different classifiers. And that is very important because that allows to resolve the difficult cases where the classifiers usually um, not perform very well. So just to give you an idea, in some of the terms, uh, we have already published what is the sensitivity based on our uh, validation studies and uh, validation studies made by other groups. The, the um, algorithm to classify COVID-19 is between 93 and 100 uh, percent. The, the article for type of article, systematic reviews or primary studies or others, the, the set is COVID-19, but and the publication is based on the sample of COVID-19 articles, but we have already tested it in other samples and, and it's, it's very similar, 94 to 97% sensitivity. And now we are testing the equity filter and the subterm. So probably it varies for different components, but we expect to have the sensitivity for each of these components calculated and validated during this year. Um, uh, one, one interesting uh, concept is that each term uh, showed here as three different bubbles, it can be a, a combination of terms. And it's very difficult to develop and improve strategies if you work in very big uh, st strategies or strategies compound by many different components. Uh, so for instance, the low and middle income countries term is composed by many, many other subterms. So you have, for instance, low middle income countries is a combination of low income countries and middle income countries. Middle income countries is a combination of lower middle and upper middle income countries. And, and then you have all the countries that are, are classified into, this, uh, uh, into these categories. And then you have the cities and or regions inside each of these countries. So, so if, you, if you go more granular, you see that each of these um, terms can be composed of many other terms. And the taxonomy that we have developed allows us to manage uh, smaller units and then automatically combine them to create the large chunk of these strategies. In this case, the LMIC strategy is uh, 100 bigger than what you're seeing on the screen. Um, so, so it's really impossible to manage by traditional means and this system allows us to do it. And now going to the, the, um, the connection with other tools, we expect to export this to the screening tool and to be able to share this in other systems too. Um, the, the screening tool from the user perspective is very similar to a screening tool like Covidence, Rayan, EP Review, or other. Uh, the articles are auto automatically uploaded if they are in the repository and it's very easy to do from, from other, other sources. Uh, the search is updated, so it's, it's with like the click of a button, so it's a leading system. And the platform allows to reuse data from other users and apply or the uh, technologies to uh, classify information basically is uh, uh, you, you see a record and you can say if it's part of your um, question or not. And the equity filter, all the all this technology behind basically allows us to add um, this um, 
uh, to the love platform in this case or to other systems in the future is also based in the progress class and it's the similar approach so we have developed boolean strategies algorithms and we allow to uh, reuse information from other screeners that have used the platform uh, one important point here is that for uh, equity terms probably and as someone put in the chat the technology or anything based on the abstract or the terms in the abstract does not work very well we are exploring technologies applied in the full text but but they're just uh, in the beginning so probably reuse of data from other users is much more important than in other topics and basically what you are going to see very soon is um, a filter uh, uh, in, in the left side of the love platform where you can click and apply everything to the question that you are interested. So you select the different components in the platform and you can see that. So for, for um, uh, the, um, the equity filter, you will see uh, each of the progress class component and many other subterms that go inside uh, or below each of these components. So for each of these, there are many alternatives. I'm, I'm, I didn't put all the alternatives here in the, in the screen, but there are multiple variables or terms related with place of residence, including the country, ethnicity also, uh, occupation is a very long list and so on. So, so this allows to also to apply to more specific uh, groups that uh, belong to uh, each of the Progress Plus um, component. And just to finish, this is uh, our inspirational phrase from Al Albert Einstein. Computers are incredibly fast, accurate, and stupid. Human beings are incredibly slow, inaccurate, and brilliant. Together, they are powerful beyond imagination. Thanks. Thanks, Gabrielle. That was a uh, yeah, some great way to finish the uh, presentations with the use of uh, AI and technology. And those slides with those thousand words really kind of brought that home. How how we we, we definitely need technology as a as a need. Um, I see there was a couple of questions in the chat that have been responded to, and I don't know if there's any other questions as we're getting close to the end of the time, but we could probably take at least one question if anyone has any. Well, there, there is a question about how much did, did it take for Love to be developed to its version today? Well, we started, uh, the, the, we developed this, the, um, the first prototypes in 2017. We released the first version in 2019. And we launched the COVID-19 version one year after that, that is, is, is much more complete. Uh, so, but it's also based on previous development for Epistemonico's database. So it's difficult to, to say exactly, but between 10, 10 or 12 years for the whole project, Epistemonico's, and then three or four years for the LOVE platform.